Um, right. Okay, Johnny Tai, we are now live and we are broadcasting. Nalini, over to you, Jadwani. How do you bowl? Nobody Parakram, Ki Jai. Yeah. Haribo. Haribo, Nalini. Would you like to start with Jadwani, please? Yes. Um. <sighs> so, Dandavats, Haribo from Navajit Dam. Um, Jai Shishi Guru Gaur Gandhar Vika Giri Dhari Shishi Radhami Nau Dihari Jho Ki Jai Ki Tali Rapri Shushma Pada Sotra Sata Shri Shima Bhakti Vedanta Shana Narayanga Shri Maharaj Ki Jai Ki Tali Rapri Shushma Pada Sotra Sata Shri Shima Bhakti Vedanta Swami Maharaj Ki Jai Ki Tali Rapri Shushma Pada Sotra Sata Shri Shima Bhakti Pragyan Keshav Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai Ki Tali Rapri Shushma Pada Sotra Sata Shri Shima Bhakti Bye bye, Puri Gosi Maharaj Kijai. Jagatam Diri, I think you have to mute yourself because it's quite noisy. Nitali Lapri Shishnapa, the Stotara Satashi Shimad Bhakti, from all Puri Gosi Maharaj Kijai. Nitali Lapri Shishnapa, the Stotara Satashi Shimad Bhakti Vedanta Gorgo, in the Swami Maharaj Kijai. Nitali Lapri Shishnapa, the Stotara Satashi Shimad Bhakti, Kumut Santa Gosi Maharaj Kijai. Nitali Lapri Shishnapa, the Stotara Satashi Shimad Bhakti Rakshak Shida Dev Gosi Maharaj Kijai. Italy Lapishish Nupar, the Stotter, the Satishima, Bhakti Mara, Daita Maharaj Kijai, Italy Lapishish Nupar, the Stotter, the Satishima, Bhakti Jivan Janadin Maharaj Kijai, Italy Lapishish Nupar, the Stotter, the Satishima, Bhakti Sidan Saswati Goswami Takakao Kart Kijai, Shla Bhakti Mara Taki Kijai, Shla Gorki Shodas Babi Maharaj Kijai, Shla Jaganad Das Babi Maharaj Kijai, Shri Rupsanatan Bataruguna, Shri Jogo Pala Batarasana Sidhuswami Kijai, Krimsa Kushi Krishna Chaitana Prabhunityananda Shri Advaita Agraha Shvasavi Gaur Bhakti Vindhi Ki Jai. Shri Navadip Dham Ki Jai, Vrindavan Dham Ki Jai, Shri Shamakun Ranakun Yamuna Ganga Tulsi Bhakti Devi Ki Jai. Shri Giraj Govadar Maharaj Ju Ki Jai, Chara Sampadai Ki Jai. Ananta Koti Vaishna Vindhi Ki Jai, Samagata Bhakta Vindhi Ki Jai, Shri Shri Gaur Premanandi. Hari Hari Bo. Um, so today on this, um, on the, on the first day of Navadeep Parikram, um, I'm going to sing Gurudev Tobe Tava Karuna Prakash by Gurudev Tobe Tava Guru Dev Kavitava Hey, so did the Vishwasi. Hari, Hari, Boli, Godruma, Kanani, Brahmi, Bota, Shana, Aki. Hari, Hari, Boli, Godruma, Kanani, Brahmi, Bota, Shana, Aki. Guru Dev. Kaube Tobo Karuna Praka Nitai Gauranga Advaita Shivas Godadhara Pancha Jano Nitai Gauranga Advaita Shivas Godadhara Pancha Jano Krishna Namarasi Bhashi Bidaga Krishna Namarasi Bhashi Bidaga Kodi Mahasankita Kodi Mahasankita Gurudev 
सवे तो गो करुणा प्रकाश नीलाृतंग पाटन गाटन सुनी बोल अपना का सुनी बोल अपना का देखिया देखिया श्री राम धुरी देखिया देखिया श्री राम धुरी भाषी बो प्रेम रो भाषी बो प्रेम तो गो करुणा प्रकाश करुणा प्रकाश न देखी श्रीरा रोचन खारी हाकुरंग बोली न देखी श्रीरा रोचन खारी हाकुरंग बोली गुरुदे खरी हा गौरंग बोली हमारे सही पागल बोलिया हमारे सही पागल बोलिया आगे ते दीबे करो मारे विषाई पागल बोलिया आगे ते दीबे को धूरी आगे ते दीबे करो गुरुदेव कावे गुरुदेव कावे तो गो करुणा प्रकाश गौर हे 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 नीता हे नीता हे नीता हे नीता हे जय गुरु Thank you, Nalini, for getting every paragraph 2023 off to a beautiful start. Thank you so much. Thank you. Om Gyan Thirumandasya Gyanjana Salakya Chakshon Militam Yena Tashma Eshi Guru Namaha Vanchakapa Turbischa Kripa Sundaivicha. Patita nam pavena bia vaishnava bia namo namaha Chana rati sunichana taro rati saishnana amani namana rena kitni sadahai Tate no kampam sasamik shamano bunjana vet makri kitam vipakam Hitvak papadevi na namaste te jivita yamukti sadaya bhakti Anya balasata sunyam gyan kamadiana vrtam anukalenya krishnu shilanam bhakti uttama.
Anina Mahalina 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 Kevala Kala Nastya 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 Bhagati Anyata Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nichananda Shri Advaita Gnata Shivasdi Gora Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare uh, from our humble obeisances to our illustrious Sri Sarup Rupanuga Gauravag, to our Parampara, to my Srila Gurudev, Srila Bhakti Granta Naranga Swami Maharaj, to all the assembled devotees and all those devotees who will be watching the who are watching on uh, YouTube and Facebook and 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 the recording. I'm so grateful for everyone coming and celebrating Navadri Parakram together. For in doing so, of course, we're glorifying Mahaprabhu and Nichananda Prabhu in the Holy Dham. And we're also glorifying our, glorifying our beautiful Gurudev, who put so many years of dedication into the Parakrams and invited us so generously to the Parakrams every year. He made this the center of his calendar. And... Uh, opened himself up for a lot of criticism, actually, for wel welcoming all these Westerners to the Holy Dharm. <clears throat> but he didn't, he didn't care for his reputation, what he cared for. He cared to serve his Swamini. And we, we adore him for this. So today is a uh, day of Sankalpa. We have our uh, wonderful Bhaktivaranta Tridandi uh, Maharaj speaking first. I'm going to hand over to him in just a second, and then that will be followed up with um, uh, Sripad uh, Bhakti Vranta Nemi Maharaj, who will be speaking on the subject of Sankalpa, and then we'll have closing Kirtan, and that's our program today. So, Maharaj, a warm welcome. Thank you so much. Excited <laughs> to hear your guitar. Over to you. I don't want to take a minute more of your time. Okay. Thank you, Yashoda Prabhu. Thank you so, so much. much. Such a heartly introduction to our most sacred parikrama that we are just about to embark on. It's getting an echo here. Yeah, there's an echo, isn't there? Someone has a speaker on somewhere? It's kind of good. We're here, kind of hearing you twice. Okay. Say, say a bit more. Let's see if I can hear you okay. Say something. Hari Bol, Hari Bol, Hari Bol. Yes, yeah, I'm okay. hearing myself twice. So oh, you're hearing yourself twice. Mm. Yeah, but anyway. We can hear you okay. Okay. okay Do you want me so, to remind you at 25 minutes, or are you happy to time yourself? Uh, 25 minutes. Okay, I, I've got two sections that I'm going to present. So after 15 minutes, one, and then 15 minutes, the other. So we'll see how we go. Okay. I just want to, first of all, before I begin, just to express my absolute gratitude to Yashoda Nandan Prabhu for erecting again this platform of Back to Zoom to give us an opportunity to come together, as you said, under the auspiciousness of our most beloved Gurudev and the mercy of Nityananda Prabhu, which we will definitely incur by performing this parikrama collectively today and for the next six, seven days. So this is um, magnificent of you to have made this effort to pull everyone together. It's not a short, um, easy thing to do, I know. And I'm very, very grateful for this opportunity. It's joyous. So, <clears throat> without further ado, I'll just begin. So Guru Vey, Golda Chandraya, Radhikaya Tadaliye, Krishnaya, Krishna Bhaktaya, Tara Bhaktaya, Namonamaha. I'm first of all offering millions and millions of Dandabhak pranams unto the lotus feet of my most beloved Gurudev, Nityalila Prabhishta Om Astol Tarasara Shishima, Srila Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj. And the same again, millions and millions of times unto the lotus feet of our most beloved Nityalila Prabhishta Om Astol Tarasara Shishima, Srila Bhakti Vedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada, and all the illustrious Rupanuga Guru Vargya and all the most wonderful Vaishnava and Vaishnavi devotees who are on this thread and attending my Dandavat Pranams to all of you today. So 1st of March, and we're beginning our Parikrama. So I'd like to read from this beautiful little 
Navadvi Mahatmya book, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, establishes a most wonderful mood and focus for our parikama. So I'm just going to read from chapter one. It's on page nine, if you have this little book available with you. So he's saying that in this material world, all living entities are seeking happiness through logic, deliberation, yoga, and so on. Only to obtain happiness, some leave materialistic life and retire to the forest. And only to obtain happiness, kings wage war with other kings. Only to obtain happiness, some run after women and wealth. And only to obtain happiness, some engage in arts and science. Some, having searched for happiness, give up the desire for it and learn how to tolerate miseries, while others dive into the ocean and commit suicide to attain it. Nityananda Prabhu lifts up both hands and calls out, O living entities, come to me and leave behind the worries and difficulties of karm and gyan. I will easily give you the happiness for which you are endeavoring so much, and I will take nothing in return. You will experience no difficulty, you will have no expenses, and you will not have to tolerate any dire sufferings. Leave all kinds of apprehensions, simply sing the name of Sri Gaurahari and dance. There is no happiness equal to that which I will give you. That happiness is always filled with pure bliss and is beyond all illusion. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he's making his introduction with this premise, he's putting this platform of profound philosophical conclusion as the basis of all he's about to present, which is a whole unfoldment of this holy dharma of Navadvip. In this way, Sri Nityananda Prabhu wants to distribute that prem, which is rarely attained even by Lord Brahma and others, due to the bad results of their own past activities and unfortunate Unfortunate persons do not want to accept this frame. How phenomenal. Strange that people don't want to accept this. The bad results of unlimited fruitive activities are destroyed for those who even once utter the names of Goranga Nitai. All of you, please listen to one more confidential topic. The treasure of Goralila is the most significant attainment for the living entities of Kali Yuga. As Sri Radha and Krishna, Sri Gorahari enjoys eternal pastimes with the Sakis in Vrindavan. Through the scriptures, the Jiva can understand the true nature of Braj Lila and the glories of Sri Radha Krishna's eternal pastimes in Braj. Through the scriptures, the entire world knows that the glories of Krishna's name and abode are unlimited. Despite this, why is it that not everyone attains Krishna Prem? Reflect upon this a little in your heart. Behind this question, it is a, profound, is a profound truth, which the living entities who are bewildered by the illusory energy do not deliberate on. So this parikrama gives us an opportunity to reflect across the board on all of Mahaprabhu's pastimes and the philosophical truths that support his identity in this world and support our relationship and coming to him with a mood of connecting and then connecting to the higher states of consciousness through Bhakti Ras, which is the gift that he's come to give us. If someone does not attain Prem, even after worshiping Sri Krishna for many lifetimes, it is clear that such a person has committed several offenses. If a living entity chants Sri Krishna's name without offenses, he attains Krishna Prem without any obstacle. The most astonishing fact in regard to the incarnation of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is that through him, a jiva can attain the treasure of Prem, even in the presence of offenses. So this is the miraculous mercy of Nityananda and Mahaprabhu, that even we can get this praying. Srila Gurudev used to say regularly that in uh, Krishna Lila, Krishna will ask, do you have a pot? Do you have a container to carry what I am going to offer? But in this age, Mahaprabhu will give us the pot 
He'll give us the container and he'll fill it full without any extra endeavor. So and carry on reading. The completely pure Krishna Prem searches for a jiva who calls out, O Nitai, O Chaitanya. Offenses cannot disturb such a person because he is absorbed in pure Krishna Prem. Streams of tears begin to flow from his eyes. After a short time, his offenses run far away of their own accord. His heart becomes pure and Prem develops within it. The offenses of the living entities of Kali Yuga are unaccountable, uncountable, and fearsome. Without chanting the name of Gora, these jivas cannot be delivered. Therefore, the scriptures repeat loudly that apart from chanting the name of Gora, there is no other way for the jiva's deliverance. So this is what we've heard from the very beginning of our Krishna consciousness, to take this holy name as seriously as we're able, according to our adhikar, etc., and then this Krishna Prem will flow in the heart. It's, I'm reading again. Sri Navadvip Dham is the crown jewel of all holy places because Sri Gorachandra appeared there. In other holy places, an offensive person has to suffer the reactions of his apparatus. But in Sri Navadvip, offenses always remain far away. The evidence of this are the two brothers, Jagai and Madai. They obtain the mercy of both Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nityananda Prabhu, even though they were committing offenses. So this is describing the immense fortune of one who takes shelter of this Navadvip Dham. And the way to take shelter of this Navadvip Dham is to come during this time. Even if you're not here physically, you can certainly come by heart. Many of you on the thread today will have been at different times and perhaps you're not able to come right now. So you can catch the flavor through your memories of the place very easily and walk through the dust with us. It's the dust that we are seeking to purify ourselves with because it's the dust that has been walked through by all the saints and sages of Mahaprabhu's pastimes, Mahaprabhu's parikars were here dancing with so much ecstasy and so much dust was raised by their dancing. So this carries on like that. But I also wanted to introduce you all to the, we can say, an orientation of the geography of the place where we're walking. If we're walking and we're conscious of these conceptions we've just been talking about, of the very real presence of Mahaprabhu and his parikas in the atmosphere around us. When there's thunderous kirtan all around, which is what it's been like from early morning here, then you can't check yourself from becoming completely um, caught up in a mood of service to Nityananda and Mahaprabhu. It's very, very ecstatic. But I want you all to appreciate the geography of the place as we go through so you're not bewildered just like during the Vrindavan Parikrama I was introducing uh, the map to everybody and describing the five forests on one side of the Jamuna the eastern side and on the western side the seven forests so here there are four islands on one side of the Ganga and there are um, seven one two three four five five islands on the other side of the Ganga. So here is a very beautiful map that only manifested about three or four hours ago. So if you zoom into it, you can see that the entirety of the islands is in the shape of a conch. And the hole, the blowing hole of the conch is directly in Antardwi, right in the very center. Yashoda, you can put your cursor there, right in the center where the star is. Yes, if everyone can see that, that's like the hole of the blowing conch. Can you see the transparency of the conch behind the petals of the lotus flower? Yeah. Nabhadweep Dham is described as being the center of an eight petal lotus. It's also described in different places as being the center of a thousand petal lotus. It's also described as being the center of a 10,000 petal lotus. So here we've got the three descriptions, the eight petal and the 
thousand petal and the even 10,000 petal lotus is described. But this conch is the way the islands are formed. So if we leave Antardweep and we come to the first island after Nam... Uh, uh, Maharaj, and before you go on, just to be clear, that conch is in three dimensions. So it's the conch is, the, our mouth is here and the conch is away from our face, right? It's in correct. 3D, 3D, yeah, correct. beautiful. Correct, yes. Yeah. And we're going to see how the folds of the conch follow the islands around. So the first island that we come to is Simantadwi, which is directly above Antadwi. With your con yes, there. That that's Simantadwi, and then we come around the side of the fold of the conch, and we come to Goldrundwi. Your shoulder with your yes. We come to Goldrundwi. You can see the curve where we've come, and then we come to Madhyadwi. So these are the three islands, or four islands, if you include Antadwi, the first one, Simantadwi. Goldrun Dweep, and then Madhya Dweep. So it comes around like in a half circle here. And then we cross the Ganga and we come into Kola Dweep. Your shoulder with your cursor, you come into Kola Dweep. Where's your shoulder gone? Oh, yes. Done. Are you there? Yeah, it's done, yeah, okay. done Maharaj. Then, then you, you move up and you come to Ritu Dweep that place of all the seasons, especially the spring season and Radha Kund, etc. And then we go from there to Janudweep. And then we go from there to Moldrundweep. And then we go from there to Rudradweep. And then we come back to Antadweep in the center. So we can see it circling around exactly like the form of a conch, following the folds of a conch. This is how the islands are arranged. And one other point to appreciate is that the islands unfold according to the beautiful verse Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, Padasevanam, Archanam, Vandanam, Dasyam, Sakyam, Atmani Vedanam in the center. We come back to Atmani Vedanam. So the first island, Simantadvi, is Shravanam, hearing. And we remember the pastime of how Parvati, she was listening to the glories of Shivji glorifying Navadweep. And she was curious about who was that personality, that glorious personality that he was glorifying. And Shivji said, oh, this is Goranga Mahaprabhu who will manifest in this Kali Yuga. So Parvati, she performs uh, austerities to have darshan of Satyanandan Gaurahari, who appears very mercifully. And Parvati is totally stunned and falls in ecstasy. And she eventually rises and chants beautiful prayers to Mahaprabhu. And then she picks up some dust from this Simantadri island and she places it between her forehead where the Sindhu of a married lady is placed. So this island has become Simantadri because of this pastime. So this is the first island it's where we go to visit the Chan Kazi after we've been to the Chaitanya Mat in our walking parikrama in Antatwi, which will be tomorrow. We visit the Chan Kazi. So that's straight up from the Chaitanya Mat, straight up from Mayapur. So that's going to be Simantatwi. And then the traditional walking parikrama, the way Bhakti Vinotako describes that it should be done, we would curve around and come into Goldrundweep, which is represented by the limb of Kirtan. So this, we all know, is the place of Srila Bhakti Vinodhaka, who revealed all these immense truths to the fortunate sadhaks who take heed and listen to his words. So in Goldrundweep, we have two places of Bhakti Vinodhaka. We have Swananda Sukhada Kunj, and we have Surabhi Kunj. Both of these places are uh, um, the, the, the places of residence of Bhakti Vinotako. Also, we have Nishringapali on the very borderline. Actually, Nishringapali in the ancient maps falls in Simantadweep. 
but in the more recent maps, it falls in Godrundvi. So we say it's in Godrundvi. Yes, that's the Shingapoli where you have your personnel. And then we come down a little bit in the Suvana Bihar and Harihara Ketra. So we'll visit those places also. But I just want you to get like a bird's eye view of where we're going so you're not disorientated as you wander around this holy dam so you know approximately the islands that we're on especially if you're familiar with the limb of bhakti that the islands represent because each island represents a specific limb of bhakti so actually it's very easy to remember the sequence if we know this verse shravanam kirtanam vishnu smaranam padasevanam etc if we know this verse from the seventh canto, Prahlad Maharaj speaking to his demonic father, telling him about the limbs of bhakti. So from Godram Dweep, we come into Madhya Dweep. Madhya Dweep is where Naimish Charanya is today. And there's um, Hunksa Baban, a beautiful place of Shivji's pastimes. And many pastimes there of saints and sages in Madhya Dweep. <clears throat> Then after Madhya Dweep, we come to Kola Dweep. Lord Boar is Kola, Kola Dweep. And that's where the Boar appeared to that Brahmana in Stacha Yuga. And we see in our Devananda Gaudiamat, our Keshavji Gaudiamat also, we have uh, uh, the Boar manifestation with Sri Radhika on the altar there. So that's celebrating Kola Dweep. And this is Padasevanam, the limb of Padasevanam. So I hope you're getting the sequence of this. This actually is a lot easier to follow than um, Vrindavan forest and the sequence of the 12 forests there. This is more simple than the, the Vrindavan forest because it's just in a complete um, circular uh, uh, idea coming back into Antadweep. So after Koladweep, then we come to Ritudweep. In Ritudweep is where Radha Kund and Shama Kund are. It's where the King of Seasons, the spring season, has his abode. And all the six seasons reside. Ritu means season. So this is called Ritudweep. And then from Ritudweep, we go to Janu Dweep. This is the great sage. Janu Rishi had his ashram there and was meditating there. And we will be discussing those pastimes as we wander through Janu Dweep in connection with Ganga Devi and Bhagirati. And then from there, we come to Modrum Dweep. So Moda and Drum, Drum means tree. And Moda, I'm not sure. I'm asking the devotees if anybody knows the meaning of Moda. It, it's some type of tree. I think it's a very large tree where Ram and Sita and Lakshman resided underneath this tree during their sojourn in this tract of land of Navadweep. And we hear the pastime. Mode from means Ram. bliss. 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 Yes. So bliss and Druma is tree. So, one so yes, one, yes. In Bengali also bliss, right? Yes. So Modrum, that that place of bliss where um, Sita Devi, she's looking at Lord Ram, who's smiling and explains to her about his avatar in this age of Kali which will appear right here in Navadweep Dam. And then from there, we go to Rudradweep, where Shivji, with his five mouths, was glorifying um, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Nityananda. And he was glorifying them so vigorously, all the saints and sages, they joined him. So when we go to this place, we hear about the Sampradaya Dharas, the different four Sampradayas we hear. It's also right next to Nirdoigat. So right here, we'll hear those pastimes of Nirdoigat. So that's, and then we come back into Antadweep, where the Lord mercifully took his birth in 1486. So basically, we've just walked around very briefly the whole Prikrama, and I've tried to show you the location, and especially the angas of Bhakti, which relate to each island so we can orientate ourselves to some degree by appreciating the um, connection with all the islands and something of their pastimes right at the very beginning. And then as we go through, 
in the next four or five days, of course, we'll be discussing in great detail each of these pastime places so that we'll get a broader, simpler picture. And the idea, this is our eternal home, Navadvip. Actually, it's our place of worship. Vrindavan is like our home. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, he coined that expression that Vrindavan is my home, Bombay is my office, and Navadvip is my place of worship. So when we come to Navadvip, we are worshiping Mahaprabhu with the intention of surfacing in the Jamuna in Vrindavan. Mahaprabhu, his Astakali Lila. What is Mahaprabhu meditating on? He's meditating on the divine pastimes of the Astakali Lila in Vrindavan. So when we really um, consider Mahaprabhu's consciousness and a desire to for sure enter a mood of Braja Lila, Mahaprabhu is Srimati Radhika herself directly, Radha Krishna Pranaya Vikriti Hardini Shakti Asman Ekatmana directly Radha Bhav Subalitam Nomi Krishna Subalitam. <clears throat> so this is um, the mood that we want to connect with while we're wandering in Braj and take great reverence and um, honor to all those great parikars who have wandered with Mahaprabhu throughout all these nine islands regularly. So this is going to be our parikrama. So this is a very brief introduction. And I think I've still got a bit of time left. But if anyone wants to ask any questions, I really would like you all to get the shape and the orientation of where we're going to be going. Because I know then a lot of the bewilderment will just fade away and dissolve when we know where we're going and we know which forest we're in and what it represents itself. We start to feel comfortable. We start to feel, yes, this is my home. Yes, I, I don't have to feel strange here, like I'm a complete foreigner in a foreign land, but I can feel some affinity with the environment. So this was my purpose in explaining this and having this very beautiful um, map drawn just I said today, I just concluded about a couple of hours ago by one very nice Bhakta Chandra, his name is from Cardiff in Wales, just a young man, and he put this together very brilliantly. So if anyone, we have a few minutes left, if anyone wants to um, unfold by asking any questions or anything of that nature, I'm ready to try to answer. Terrible, Prabhuji. Uh, this is uh, Jayshree David Asi. Um, I just had one question. So with these um, Navdeep pastimes, are they manifested in the Navdeep spiritual realm and, and also in the material realm? So they're happening at the same time, aren't they, in the spiritual realm and the material realm. Is that right? Yes, but in a different mm -hmm. way, of course, because in the material realm, the material nature is a real um, reality, so to speak. But in Aprakat Leela, that doesn't exist, of course. There is not a, a blemish of conditioned thought or consciousness. Yeah. But the pastimes that unfold, um, some of them are naimitic, which means temporary. Just like in Krishna's Leela, Kangsa, for example, isn't there in Goloka Brindava. You know, many, none of the demons are there in Brindava. So Chankazi won't be there in Vrindavan, but there's a conception of these pastimes which replicate themselves in the Swetadweep. Swetadweep is the transcendental abode of Mahaprabhu, and Gokul is the transcendental abode of Krishna directly. So there, these Aprakat pastimes, there is a, a, a conception of yeah. all of these pastimes there. But the blissful, the, the height of the blissful moods, Mahaprabhu is experiencing in Navadvip um, moods of connection with Krishna in mood of meeting with Radhika. It's described ultimately at Sri Vasangam is where the Rasalila took place. So these are all uh, principally um, meeting pastimes, Mahaprabhu's relationship with all the residents of Navadvip, etc. Whereas when he leaves Navadvip, it's practically he never sees Krishna, except very, very seldomly, Gurudev said, 
once or twice, but his whole renounced last 24 years is all one of Vipralamba, whereas in Navadweep, it's one of Sambhog, of meeting. Uh, and he's more in the I identity of Sham Sunda. That identity of Radha hasn't fully blossomed until he meets Rai Ramananda at the Godavari River. That's when that Saki Bhav can really manifest in the heart of Mahaprabhu. But until that time, it's just in potential form within the heart of Mahaprabhu, ready to manifest. Basically, that's, that's those separation feelings which all come in Puri Dham. But here in Navadweep, they are um, much more uh, of meeting mood. Does that answer your question? Yes, yeah, that does. Thank you very much. All right, you'll have a question. Yeah, Jeep. Pavana, Prabhu. We hear that um, at some point we take through a womb of a gopi to be further trained before we actually go to the uh, unmanifest realm of Vrindavan. It doesn't hold true to the simultaneous form. In Navadri, is it that we also must appear in a form where Lord Jaitu is man? Yes, yes. <laughs> Prabhu, this is very beautifully described at the end of the, um, I think it's the 17th chapter in Jayavadama. And there's a whole description about this very, very clearly. Some devotees have the adhikar to perform pastimes in both leelas. So they will get two swaroops. This is how it's described by Pil Bhakti Vinotako in Jayavadama. Just give me a Jayavadama for a minute. And then uh, I I'll give you the exact page. I think it's in the 17th chapter. Um, but at the end of the 17th chapter, this exact answer to your question is um, described, Prabhu. Yes. Yes, some jivas have the adhikar just to go straight to Goloka Vrindavan. Others have the adhikar just to remain with Mahaprabhu in Svetadvip. And others have the swarup, uh, two swarups to go into both worlds, depending on how you have uh, developed your devotional sentiments as a sadhak in this world, depending on uh, the association, etc., that you've kept. So therefore, I would answer your question by saying definitely you would take form, you would take birth from a gopi in those principal pastime places, just like in Vrindavan. Right? Does that answer? Yes? Um, let's have one more question before we move on. Sean. Oh, well, it wasn't a question. I just wanted to share um, that, uh, yeah, this is called Swaru Vyuha having these two um, um, uh, forms, one in, um, in um, Braj Lila and Navadi Lila. Swarup right. Vyuha. Swarup Vyuha, yeah. Very nice. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Maharaj. Um, okay. The one, many rich points of nectar there. The one thing that re really hit home for me was when you said how uh, calling out the names of Lord Nichananda Prabhu. It um, gives us the pot to collect all the mercy from Krishna. Yes. And um, Gurudev used to say how our pots are, are broken. So it's really important to, to have... Pots. Yeah, you can either say Nichananda's giving us the pot or he's mending our pot. Yes. But it doesn't have to be a struggle. It can If we just accept the grace of Nichananda Prabhu in our heart... And we just press that switch. Yes, I accept all of it causelessly. Then we can receive everything we need to receive. Totally, totally beautiful, Shoda. Yes, completely beautiful. Thank so, you. So um, I'm going to hand over in one second one to our next. Oh, A quick announcement, everybody. On the seventh, it's Gorpanim. Well, obviously, it's Gorpanim. Uh, east of North America. North America is the sixth. Um, however, we celebrate on the seventh and on the seventh, we're gonna have a mega day. 
Uh, we're starting at half past six in the morning UK time. We're going through to almost one in the morning the next day. So it's going to be an 18 hour program with 28 speakers. So you're going to be nectared out on that day, um, uh, we hope. So um, hope you can make it. Everything also will be recorded so you can tell your family and friends um, <clears throat> that they can watch the recording. Uh, the recording link should be up in the groups within an hour of finishing each parakram. Okay, Shripad, the Bhaktivedanta Nemi Maharaj, Haribo, welcome. You're looking happy and nicely warming the, over there in Navarri. A warm welcome to you. Hare Krishna, Amagyana Timi Randhasya, Gyananjana Shalakaya, Chakshuram Nilitangyam, Tasmai Shri, Kutuvelam. Imam Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prishtaya, Bhutale, Shri Made Bhaktivedanta, Samaniti Namane. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya, Radhikaya, Priyatmane, Shri Shri Made Bhaktivedanta, Narayi Niti Namane. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya, Gaura Prishtaya, Bhutale, Shri Shri Made Bhaktivedanta, Harti Iti Namane. Vancha Kalpatarubhyascha, Kripa Sindhubhyavcha, Putitanam Pavne Pyo, Vaishnave Pyo, Namo Namaha. Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shadvaita Gadadha Shiva Sadishi Gopu. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare. Parama Karuna Pahanduija, Nitai Gaur Chandra, Savayavata Sarashiromani, Kevala Ananda Kanda. So by great good fortune, we're continuing this uh, parikrama process, we can say. Oh, by the way, I've got, what, 35 minutes, 30 minutes? Uh, you have 30 minutes, Marsh. Yeah. 30, okay. 30, yeah. Got it. Um, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, under the instructions of Srila Bhakti No Thakur, uh, he made a big, celebration of Godamandal Parikrama. And then his after he disappeared, there was some chaos. And his beloved disciple, Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshav Goswami Maharaj, my Param Gurudev also, he revived this. And our beloved Gurudev, Sri Shima Bhaktivedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj, faithfully uh, nourished this beautiful Godamandal Parikrama pastime, we can say, festival pastime. And very kindly for our really inconceivable good fortune, brought, brought us Westerners into this amazing uh, festival, Parikrama festival. So I'm on the roof. I tried to go out and find a, uh, a quiet place, which anyone who's been to India knows is very, very difficult. So I, I was finding some quiet place, but then the signal ran out, so I had to come back. So I hope you can hear me. Yeah, I can this hear morning, you well, Mark. Yeah. Huh? We can hear you well. Yeah, okay, good. I've got a microphone here. This morning we performed Sankalpa. Devotees uh, left quite early. Uh, sannyasis and senior devotees in the four and the deafening loudspeakers right behind with glorious Gauri Kirtan, Hare Krishna Kirtan and went down to Ganga and there we performed Sankalpa uh, chanting auspicious prayers, offering auspicious prayers to Ganga identifying ourselves, we're coming really from the cosmic scale right down to the individual scale, identifying what day of Brahma is this, which uh, yuga are we, which Kali yuga, what is it, right down, right down to the exact time and then identifying the individuals who are taking part in this and our intention. So that's a very, and then offering auspicious articles to Ganga, uh, incense and lamps, flowers, offering Ganga water back to Ganga, because actually whatever, 
Gunga water is all auspicious. It's more auspicious than anything that we can offer. So offering and flowers, sweets, coconuts are flying over the head of the crowd, fortunately, not hitting anybody on the way into the river, into Gunga. And after that, reciting prayers for Ganga Devi and Jamuna Devi also. And then a very, quite an emotional ceremony. She umadi these ashes. They had brought, I don't know if they're all the ashes, but some of the ashes anyway. They brought in an earthen pot like this. And chanting auspicious prayers. And then pouring in milk and yogurt and ghee into the pot and then one devotee took the pot and he went he went right out into Ganga under direction from older devotees on the bank Dujja especially and then he dipped three times into Ganga and then he dipped right the way down with the pot and he left the pot uh, at the bottom of Ganga it's very you know, see these ashes, that's all that's left after. Everybody's going to end up that way. After all our efforts, our activities and everything, what's left is this. Mm. It's very, I mean, evocative. In the case of Uma Didi, it's like final farewell, physically speaking. So those are some of the things that went on today. And then joyfully devotees taking dip in in Ganga also. Mm. So we're connecting, what is Sankalpa? We're connecting, we're connecting with the universe and connecting with the cosmic design, the divine design behind the universe for the universal well-being of all living entities. The basis of the universe is actually unconditional spiritual love. That's the basis of life. That's the fundamental nature of the soul, axiomatically. And it's also the fundamental basis of matter because Krishna expanding himself as super soul, or Maha Vishnu, Garbhadakshai Vishnu, uh, Kshiradakshai Vishnu, has produced, designed, produced, and main, is maintaining this universe simply for our, for our welfare. Uh, it's it's a lunatic asylum for those that, who think that seeking to control and enjoy is the real main purpose of life. And then when we come to our senses, it becomes a hospital where under the direction of doctors, our beautiful spiritual masters and scriptures, uh, Guru Shastra Sadhu, we can gradually develop a mood of uh, loving service to the Supreme Lord. Mm. So, Sankalpa. Sankalpa is a vow. We're taking a vow. And we've heard this term also. Anukulyasya Sankalpa. This is the beginning of Sharanagati. Anukulyasya Sankalpa. So we're taking a vow. We're connecting with what is favorable. And then and then we're avoiding the unfavorable. So at the beginning, we make a firm determination, a firm vow that now I'm taking part in this transcendental process and I'm, I'm making a de firm determination that I will maintain, I will observe these particular principles like following the program in the temple, RT, uh, performing actual parikrama means physically going out to the different places, hearing about the pastimes that took place in those places or are taking place, uh, taking place in those places. Under the guidance of uh, Pranaya Bhakata, those who actually have, like Srila Bharti Maharaj, he said, unless, unless you're with devotees in whose heart the flame of separation is burning, then it will hardly be effective. So we're praying for that kind of association of course, taking with us books like Sri Navadip Dha Mahatmya, Taku Bhaktivinoda, and remembering Sri Gurudev's uh, instructions from these books and his personal presence in these places and his Harikata places and the Harikata of 
his beloved followers. So in this way, we can gradually develop a mood of association with the Dharma. Mm. With any, any process, anything that we do actually, there's three basic principles. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, this is, the, this is the only subject matter of the Vedas. It is Sambandha Abhideya Prayojana. Sambandha means, uh, it means our relationship with Krishna. And Taku Bhakti Vinod in Sri Chaitanya Shichamrita, he's explained that also Sambandha means basic principles. Like what is matter, what is jiva, what is ishvara, what is love, what is the process for developing love like this. So we have basic principles. And amongst those basic principles, we should understand what is the goal of life. The goal of life is not to enjoy and control, although we have that tendency. In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna explains, Ishwaram, Ishwaroham Aham Bhogi, that this mood of trying Ishwaro, I am the controller, and then uh, Aham Bhogi, I'm the enjoyer. This is actually a demonic mood. It's against, what's it against? It's against the divine intention of the universe. Because who's the real controller? Krishna's the controller. I'm living in this body, which is main, main, being maintained as 30 trillion cells in my body, and they're all going about their business, and I've got nothing to do with it. Uh, like, you know, my fingernails are growing, my hair's growing, my food's digesting, so many, so many processes are going, I haven't got anything to do with that. So it's all being maintained, it's all being controlled by Achintri Shakti, by inconceivable potency. And this body is programmed for death. There's nothing we can do about that. Birth, old age, disease, and death. We're all subject to those. So the idea that we can actually control, like I hear these uh, globalists now, they're programming their thought processes into, I don't know, some uh, Maha computer so that they'll become immortal. But, you know, it's one thing to preserve some of his thought process, however much that's possible. But the point is, it's the jeev. Once that body dies, the jeev is going to go off with a subtle body under the direction of super soul and come to Yamaraj. But where's the control? We know power. Whatever we power, power we have is either karmic power or we have some bhakti shakti. And then a humbogi, I'm the enjoyer. But Krishna says, I'm the enjoyer. Bhaktaram yagya tapasam sarva loka mahishra. All efforts should be for my pleasure. And think, God, what a spoil sport. Krishna's not a spoil sport. Because he's pleased when we perform activities which are auspicious for us. Just like parents, they're happy to see the children playing nicely. So in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna explains how, you know, first of all, he's, he's provided sacrifices the demigods so that people can live in happy uh union or harmony with the intention of the demigods but then going beyond that that's karma yoga and jnana yoga and bhakti ultimately bhakti yoga so krishna's pleased when we engage in all these processes so yakta bhaktaram yagya tapasam krishna's krishna's actually the supposed enjoy of everything so even if we're working we should work for krishna's pleasure and dovetail our tendencies in the bhakti process. So the goal is not to enjoy and control. We should understand that what is our ultimate goal? And Srila Gurudev has explained so many times. Mm. Once he, we went to Delhi and there was a, a, an Amhat program there. So there's one devotee there, Prabhu. He was singing in this Namahat. He was singing, Oh, Radhe, Radhe, Doyakoro, Radhe, Radhe, Doyakoro, Radhe, Radhe, Doyakoro. And in the middle of that, Srila Gurudev came in and he sat down and the Prabhu kept on singing for a while. And then when he finished, Srila Gurudev said, So supposing Srimati Radharani came and said, Yes, I will give mercy. 
what is your desire? What do you actually want? And there was a silence in the room. Some of the Westerners said, Radha Palidasan, Radha Palidasan. But in general, it wasn't clear. But we have to be clear that what is our, what's our ultimate goal? And when we're performing uh, any like austerity, but we want to know what's the immediate goal. What is the next step or the next two steps on our journey to that ultimate goal? So it's our ultimate goal we have to be clear about and our immediate goal, which is going to take us one, two, three more steps on the way to that. Sankalpa. So Sankalpa, we're connecting our conception and our determination with the universal determination, with Krishna's determination that somehow I'm going to get these condition, conditioned jeeves out there, I'm going to pull them by the hair or whatever, if they can't come quiet. This is uh, Sankalpa. So then Sambandha, then Abhideya. So then there's a process for actually achieving that goal, the immediate goal and the ultimate goal. And Parikrama is part of that process. Uh, so, uh, Pujapad Tridandi Maharaj has already pointed out that the sequence of islands is, uh, follows the sequence of the processes of bhakti that Prahlad Maharaj describes to Hirani Kashipu. Prahlad Maharaj is such an extraordinary bhakti. He's, preaching to the biggest demon in the universe completely fearlessly. But then how do we remember? Okay, we can remember that sequence of processes, but how can we remember the sequence of the islands? Which island corresponds to which process? To do that, we look at the Jayadvani, which is there in our songbook. Uh, Shri Mayapo, Antati Mayapo, Simantati Ko Drumadi, Majji, Kholji, Rishji, Janji, Moda Drumadi, Rujji Vapu, Shri Navadi, Kham Kita. So, as Pujapad uh, Shadani Maharaj pointed out, that the first island that we go to is Simantati, but then it mentions Antati Mayapo. Antati Mayapo corresponds to Atmani Vedanam. But there's two stages of Atmani Vedanam. One is in the very beginning, when we first come to Krishna consciousness and we think, oh, I should surrender to Krishna. So we do what we can, We're surrendering our body and our mind and our words and to Krishna, but it's not complete because Atma means ultimately it means the soul. So Srila Gurudev pointed out that you can't perform complete Atma Nivedanam until you've realized your soul, realized your Sarup. In other words, Sarup city, then we can perform Atma Nivedanam. And in, initially, it's uh, like initial Atman Vedanam. And then at the end, ideally, <laughs> ideally, we visit uh, <laughs> Antony Mayapur on <laughs> the last day. Here, it's a little perilous undertaking because that's time of holy. In Mayapur, I think they don't observe holy so strictly, but in Navadip, it's they drench everybody with indelible dye, dyes. So Simantati Gaudrumadip. And then, so when we start with Simantati, then we follow the sequence of the islands mentioned in the Jayadvani prayers. And that follows the sequence of the nine processes of Bhakti. Navadvip. So Pujapad Shtani Maharaj explained that. Navadvip means there's eight an eight petal lotus with the antidip, the internal, uh, is, is antidip mayapur. So this is nava. Nava means nine. Uh, and the nine islands are actually manifestations of the nine processes. They're not just, it's not just symbolic. She Vishnu Priya and also uh, she Navadri. They are actually manifestations of the ninefold the process ninefold process of bhakti. Nava also means new. So, a new island. Oh, what's this? She Taku Bhakti Minod describes from, and I don't remember which scripture it is. 
he describes a very beautiful pastime that Radha, this is the appearance of Navadi, Radha heard that Krishna was dallying with a gopi called Viraja. And she became anxious. So she ran to the place. Krishna had heard that, uh oh, Radha is coming. And he hid himself or disappeared. And Viraja took the form of a river. So Shimadi Radhika came, nobody there, can't grab him. And then again, she heard the same news. Oh, he's associating with other gopis. I have to attract him in some way. I need to be with him all the time. He's very untrustworthy. He's extremely fickle, chanchal. So in her, by her potency, she created a beautiful place. Uh, beautiful flowers, beautiful trees, fruits, fragrant creepers, bees, birds, deer are wandering around. And then dressed in very colorful and gorgeous cloth, she takes a flute and she plays on the flute. Uh, so Krishna's Kalaniti is like the ocean of arts. And Gurudev said he's like the owner of a, mu a musical shop. If you want, if you're interested in the harmonium, we'll come in. But he can't actually play the harmonium, but he can play some introductory scales, very nice. Or Mridanga, oh yes. But Srimadhi Radhika is Kalavati. She's actually the, the embodiment of artistry. So although Krishna plays on his flute, but Srimadhi Radhika, when she plays on his flute, just like Krishna's attracting Radha, the gopis, when he plays his flute, when she plays her flute, Krishna's attracted. <coughs> so Krishna came and seeing this beautiful place and understanding her intention, he's holding her hand and saying, oh, this beautiful place, it will always be called Navadvip, New Island. And then being completely one in intention, Radha and Krishna joined into a, a ref, an effulgent male form, Goranga. So Krishna's taking the bodily complexion of Shimati Radhika. And uh, her associates, they also took male forms to serve this combined form of Radha and Krishna. Mm. So this is one explanation of how Navadeep appeared. But actually we understand that Navadeep is not a temporary thing. It's not like Radha and Krishna perform their pastimes, Krishna disappears, then after some time Lord Chaitanya appears, and Navadeep appears. No, they're eternal. In the form of Sachinanda and Gaura Hari, Krish, Radha and Krishna constantly performing these pastimes together. The Krishna is always relishing her mood of loving service. Mm. So the, the way that this sequence of processes, Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smarnam, this is not an art, it's not a religion. When I say it's not a religion, I mean, it's not a faith religion. Uh, it's, a, it's a natural way of making relationships. Just like, for example, um, somebody may introduce us. Like, for example, Mother Smith in Wales, she said, oh, I'd like you to meet such and such a person. Okay, I heard about them. Sounds interesting. So we hear about them. Then there's a meeting. And then naturally, you know, when you meet some nice person, so you're both complimenting each other. Oh, I think you're very... If it's boy meets girl, so then the boy's thinking, oh, she's really beautiful. And he tells her. And she thinks, oh, he's so heroic or so handsome or whatever. And she tells him. And then they part that time and then they're remembering each other. Maybe remembering the name, like Maria, Maria, Maria. And then they meet again and offering, offering nice things to each other, Archana. And then she's created some problem with her bicycle or the refrigerator or whatever. So she needs some help. Oh yes, I can, I'm very good at work on bicycles and refrigerators. So this is Savannah. So this is a natural way hearing about Krishna, meeting Krishna in some way through prayer, through, through chanting. Like I remember the first time 
in the kirtans at at Bury Place. As the kirtans became more transcendentally energetic and I was feeling this reality in my heart I never felt before. Completely intoxicating, amazing, beautiful. And then remembering so many things we can remember. And then, you know, serving Krishna, Archanam, and not offering nice articles. So this is a natural process for developing and maintaining relationships. It's not an art, it's like Prabhupada said, this chanting of Hare Krishna is not an artificial imposition on the mind. So this bhakti process is not an artificial, uh, not a, an artificial imposition on the mind. So parikrama means step by step, step by step. Ideally, following in the footsteps of the previous acharyas, like the first parikrama that we know is when Nityananda Prabhu took young Jeev, Jeev, Jeev Goswami on parikrama. This is described in Navadipa Mahatmya. And also, mm, sometime after that, uh, Narutam Thakur Srinivas and Shamananda Prabhu, they perform Parikrama, Gorama, Godamanda Parikrama. That's described in Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat. And Thakur Bhaktivinoda himself also performed Parikrama and that ecstatic Parikrama, that's described in Navadipa Taranga. Uh, so these, ideally, Parikrama following step by step because it's, an, it's a natural process, it's a natural systematic progress process. And just as we're going step by step on Parikrama, so our bhakti is also increasing step by step. Hare Krishna. So, uh, like Pujbhatradani Maharaj is saying, yes, we should have some a clear picture. What is Navadi? What is the place? Make some connection with the place. So we need to make a connection with the place. We need to make a connection with the moods. We need to understand what am I part of? When I'm performing Parikrama, okay, there's this huge party. But what am I really part of? What am I really connecting with? Hare Krishna. Vanchakalpa Guru Basakti Basana Devita. Kutitanam Pavne Pyo. Vaishnava Pyo Namona. I think there may be two or three minutes left. If somebody has yeah, any Maraji, questions. you were talking ah. about, you talked about something. It was really delightful what you were saying trying to look at my notes here about yeah connecting with the universe and the divine intent behind the universe and it suddenly occurred to me that some bandha means to become one-hearted with the other vastu with the other personality so some kalpa must mean to become one with time one with right? time yeah this mm, kalpa is time and uh well, san is means connecting with, joining. Yeah. Um, connecting with time, but it's also, yeah, and it's an intention to connect with our, like the, the dham, the holy dham, which is the place of pastimes and the place of moods of service. Yeah. Yeah, very beautiful, Maharaj. Thank you. Do we have a question from Maharaj before we um, do our closing kirtan with uh, Ramananda Prabhu? Just jump in if anybody has any questions. Hare Maharaj. When you were with us on in London before the phenomenon, you told a very beautiful story about why. And Mahaprabhu's book is saffron, and I was wondering if you can summarize it for the benefit of the John I couldn't hear the question. You showed it, Prabhu. Can you can you repeat that? I, I couldn't hear the question either, uh, Prabhu. Oh, good. Okay. Now, is it? Can you hear me now? It's very, very, very difficult to hear you, uh, Chief. What he asked is that Maharaj told in London how Mahaprabhu was wearing saffron, and if he could explain why the color saffron was being worn, something like that. Yeah, you you mentioned a pastime of uh, including the Rasa Leela, and I won't and summarize that. 
saffron, it, it's, it's like Aaron. Krishna's lotus eyes are Aaron. So it's actually the, uh, it's the color of love. And who's describing? In, uh, not Prabodhananda Sarasati, who's the son of Kavi Kanapur, who wrote to Sh Chaitanya Chandra. Anyway, he's, he's describing how the gopis are looking at Mahaprabhu and they're saying, he's taking renounced life. He's renounced more association with women because he's actually, he's Krishna, just constantly meditating on, on ladies. So Arana's, one thing is, it's the, it's the color of Krishna's lotus eyes in the mornings. When his eyes are half closed and they're reddish because of the moods of amorous love that he's been engaged in during the night. Wow, that's beautiful, Maharaj. Can you, can you, that, that's so one, so it's the color, to say that again, that's so beautiful, the color of Krishna's eyes. It's the color of Krishna's eyes, you know, sometimes, like if somebody's as, as been he wakes studying up. all night, yeah, if yeah. someone's been studying all night, he might, he might, his eyes might become red. Wow. So Krishna's studying, you know, moods of amorous pastimes and his eyes have become wow. red. That's stunning. That's absolutely stunning. What a, what a, what what a great what a great answer to thanks uh, Prabhu for asking that great question. Thank you. Yeah. So we're going to uh, move into our closing kirtan now. With one, uh, one, just one point. Yeah. Um, you know we hit this phrase. You know I lost my heart in Vrindavan. So I just found a, a marble on the roof. You see. So if anybody yeah. lost their marbles in Navadvip, I can help. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Okay, Hare Krishna. Well, Maharaj, you yeah. if, you, if you lose that marble, then it will be you. That you if you if you lose the marble, it'll be you. Okay, so the other ones, <laughs> uh Ramananda, I'm gonna share the screen so I've got the bhajan for you. And uh, uh let me find the bhajan. Here's the bhajan so everyone can see what Prabhu is singing. Okay, Prabhuji, all yours. Thank you. Should I read the translation or they can see that now so they should be fine? Yeah, I think uh, yeah, I'll just I'll just scroll I'll scroll it so I can I've got it as big as possible and then I'll scroll it as you're singing it. Abe <laughs> Kabe, <laughs> Koribo sambandha mani Kabe habe hai no dashamo Kabe habe hai no dashamo Janna vi bhuni ne chin maya kanane Boshia be Janus Hale Krishna Namam Rita Nirantara Pibo Daki Bogo Ranga Gole Gobe Abehano Dasham 
ਮੋਰ ਕਰ ਦੇ ਆਵੇ ਹੈ ਨੋ ਦਾ ਸ਼ਾਮ ਮੋਰ ਆ ਗੌਰਨੀ ਤਾ ਲਈ ਤੋਰਾ ਦੂਤੀ ਭਾਈ ਪਤੀ ਤਾ ਜਾਨੇ ਰਬਾ ਅਧਮ ਪਤੀ ਤਾ ਆਮੀ ਹੈ ਦੁਰ ਜਾ ਹਉ ਮਾਰੇ ਕ੍ਰਿਪਾ ਸਿੰਧੂ ਕਬੇ ਹਉਦੇ ਹੈ ਨੋ ਦਾ ਸ਼ਾਮ ਮੋਰ ਕਬੇ ਹਉਦੇ ਹੈ ਨੋ ਦਾ ਸ਼ਾਮ ਕਾਂਦੀ ਤੇ ਕਾਂਦੀ ਤੇ ਸ਼ੋਲ ਕ੍ਰੋਸ਼ ਧਾਮ ਜਾਨ ਵੀ ਹੋ ਭਈ ਅਗੂਲੇ ਭ੍ਰਮਿਤੇ ਭ੍ਰਮਿਤੇ ਕੋਣ ਭਾਗਯ ਫਲੇ ਦੇਖੀ ਕੀ ਛੋ ਤਰੂ ਮੂਲੇ ਆਹਾ ਮਨੋਹਰ ਕੀ ਦੇਖੀ ਨੋ ਬੋਲਿਆ ਮੂਰਛੀ ਤਾ ਵਾ ਸੰਵਿਤ ਪਾਈਆ ਕਾਂਦੀ ਬੋਗੋ ਪਨੇ ਸਮਰੀ ਦੂ ਕ੍ਰਿਪਾ ਲਾ ਸਮਰੀ ਦੂ ਕ੍ਰਿਪਾ ਲਾ ਕਬੇ ਅਬੇ ਹੈ ਨੋ ਦਾ ਸ਼ਾਮੋ ਮੋਰ ਕਬੇ ਹਵੇ ਹੈ ਨੋ ਦਸ਼ਮੋਰਾ ਕੈ ਜੀ ਜਰਾਇਆ ਸ਼ਬੀ ਵਿਧ ਬੰਧਾ ਛਾਰੀ ਬੋ ਸੰਸਾਰ ਕੋਰ ਜਯ ਨਿਤਾਇ ਜਯ ਗੋਰ ਜਯ ਨਿਤਾਇ ਜਯ ਗੋਰ ਜਯ ਨਿਤਾਇ ਗੋਰੰਗ ਜਯ ਨਿਤਾਇ ਗੋਰੰਗ ਨਿਤਾਇ ਗੋਰੰਗ ਜਯ ਨਿਤਾਇ ਗੋਰੰਗ ਜਯ ਨਵਦੀਪ ਧਾਮ ਜਯ ਨਵਦੀਪ ਧਾਮ ਨਵਦੀਪ ਧਾਮ ਜਯ ਨਵਦੀਪ ਧਾਮ ਹਰੀ ਬੋ hari hari bol hari bol jai hari bol hari bol beautiful thank you so much ramananda prabhu i'm going to stop the live stream now and um everybody can uh, chat amongst yourselves if you feel like it